Today I have with me the Nokia C7. It comes in a blue box that is very similar to its higher end sibling, the Nokia N8. It isn't quite as plush, but it is equally as compact, thin and streamlined. If we open the box up, we find that the C7 is presented to us right up front, slightly off centre, in some protective plastic casing. We'll put that to one side for now, and we'll take a look inside the box and come back to the phone later. Underneath the cardboard housing, we find a 3.5mm headphone set protected by some plastic packaging. The 3.5mm headphone set has a dedicated call, answer and end button, which is really useful, but other than that, it's quite a basic headset, uh, nothing to write home about here. Moving on, we have a small USB to micro USB cable. It's quite short in length, which is great if you're using a laptop that's already on your desk, but not so good if you use a desktop computer in which case it won't be long enough, and you'll have to use a USB hub to go the extra length. The Nokia C7 makes use of a 1200mAh battery. It's small, light, compact, nothing really to mention here. Finally, we have the mains charger, which uses a proprietary port on the C7 device. It's worth noting that the device can also be charged via micro USB. Finally, we have the quick start guide and other associated documentation. Let's look at the device. The Nokia C7 offers a polished stainless steel body with glass fittings for a look that is both elegant and sophisticated. The weight of the device feels perfect in the hand and Nokia have done an excellent job at putting together a device that feels both strong and sturdy and looks good from almost every angle too. On the front face of the device there is a bevel that runs all the way around the edge and has a gun metallic finish. This is probably made of plastic or glass, but really does look quite attractive. The screen itself is a 3.5 inch Active Matrix LED display. At the bottom, we have three physical hardware keys, a call or dial key, a menu or home key, and a back or call end key. At the top of the device, we have the dedicated forward facing camera and a light sensor. Along the right hand edge of the phone, we have a whole host of hardware keys starting with the dedicated camera key. By pressing this key, this will take you to the camera application regardless of where you are in the operating system software or any other application that you may be running. Next we have the dedicated spring-loaded physical lock key and at the top we have the media keys for volume up and volume down. On the top edge of the device we have the power on and off button, the 3.5mm headphone jack and a micro USB port protected by a flap. As you can see, the left-hand edge of the device is much more minimalistic and is occupied by a sole proprietary Nokia charging port. The bottom edge of the device has space for a keyring loop and of course there is the microphone too. The back of the device offers the 8 megapixel camera with dual LED flash. We can easily remove the back casing by applying pressure to this switch. We find that the back actually comes away very easily, like so. This reveals the SIM card slot and the micro SD card slot. It is worth noting that the micro SD card cannot be removed or accessed whilst the battery is in place. However, the SIM card can. The first impressions of the C7 are very positive. Although it is smaller than some of the higher end devices with 4 inch screens, it weighs just the right amount to make you feel like you are holding onto something of real value. Now it's time to jump in and take a look at the software. The Nokia C7 runs Symbian version 3, an open source operating system maintained by Nokia. Symbian is different to Symbian OS because it is based on an interface component of the S65th edition. It is this interface component that gives the C7 its looks and feel whilst you're using the phone, so this is what we will be paying attention to today. As you can see, you can swipe between home screens and of course, you can also rotate them and view the phone in landscape mode, like so. At the time of creating this review, only a small number of handsets are running this version of Symbian. These include the Nokia C6, the Nokia C7, the Nokia E7, and of course, the flagship Nokia N8. One of the best aspects of this version of Symbian is how easy it is to customise. We'll start by creating a widget on the home screen, by long tapping and waiting for it to change to edit mode. Next, we can press in one of the available spaces and scroll along a list of available widgets to see which one we like the look of. I'm going to select notifications for now. 
If you're used to using Android and you want to delete a widget, you might try and press and drag it down to the bottom of the display. Unfortunately, this doesn't work, and instead, you have to long tap on the actual widget itself, and then press remove. To add a new widget in place of the one you've just deleted, you simply tap on the plus symbol, and scroll down to the available list of widgets, and select the one that you would like. Once you've found it, select it, and it will appear just like it did before. For good measure, I'll add the final widget now, just so we can see what a completely filled home screen looks like once we're done. Of course, it is possible to view the widgets in either portrait or landscape, and if you rotate the device, they will reorganise themselves accordingly. You may notice that as I rotate the device, the display does not update as quickly as you may like. It really does need exaggerated movements in order for it to update properly. Next, we'll take a look at how easy it is to customise the background, and furthermore, investigate the processing speeds at which the device does so. To update the background, you should select the Option button on the on-screen menu at the bottom of the display, and then select Change Wallpaper. I'm going to select an image that is already on the memory card from a recent phone conference. Once you've found an image that you're happy with, all you need to do is tap it. It will then update, and you'll notice that it does so quite quickly. Let's change the home image again, and see how long it takes the process this time, just so we have a comparison. I'll select another image from the memory card, and unfortunately it looks like on this occasion it hasn't updated quite as seamlessly. Nonetheless, it wasn't too bad. To reorganise the widgets, you can literally drag and drop them when you're in edit mode, from one position to the next, as so. To delete a home screen, tap options and delete home screen, and then confirm. You'll now see that we only have two home screens, but it's just as easy to add a new one by tapping options again and then hitting new home screen. You may notice that when you actually have three home screens, you are unable to add another one. This is because this version of Symbian only supports three home screens. This falls short of Android, which in the latest version can support up to seven home screens in some cases. Next, we'll take a look at what happens when you press the menu button to bring up your application icons. We'll also take a look at the phone settings to find out what we can change here. You will notice here that we have the typically fine-grained control over the phone settings. If we look at the phone settings in particular, we have all the typical things such as voice commands, sensor settings, touch input, as well as time and date. Because my phone is a UK-based model, it is automatically set up to have the UK date format and UK time zones. Now let's take a look at the connectivity options. You may notice that this device is already connected to a local Wi-Fi network, but you can also control remote drives, video sharing, and an FM transmitter so that you can listen to music that exists on the phone on your radio in the car. Next up, let's check out the messaging application. Let's create a new message and see what the keyboard looks like when held in landscape mode. Although it is very difficult to type whilst reaching around the camera, hopefully you'll get a good look at what the keyboard on the Symbian 3 looks like. At the moment, the keyboard settings are set to default, and there is no predictive text whilst typing. Now let's take a look at what the keyboard looks like in portrait. Whilst we rotate it, you'll see that it automatically adjusts itself into a traditional phone keypad. Typing on this is obviously much slower, not only because I haven't used one for a while, but also because getting to the keys is a little harder, especially if you have larger thumbs. To help me out, let's turn on some predictive text. Although I'm probably not going to make very good use of this, seeing as I haven't used this in a while either, it should try and predict what I'm trying to type based on a list of known words. Presumably, by pressing space whilst you're in the middle of typing a word with predictive text on, it will autocomplete. I think I would do much better if I had Swipe for Symbian installed. You can install Swipe via Nokia PC Suite or SD card. You'll be prompted to reboot your device following installation. If you're not familiar with Swipe, it's very popular on Android and allows you to literally swipe across your keyboard in order to enter words. Swipe themselves report that you can type over 40 words per minute. It might be worth mentioning that Swipe is still in beta for Symbian. Let's check out one of my favourite parts of messaging, emoticons. You'll see that this device has plenty to offer and you'll have a lot of fun using them if you're into them like I am. Obviously, we're only scratching the surface when it comes to the messaging on the Nokia C7. Ultimately, it will be how you find using this yourself that will really make the big difference. Whilst I fiddle around with the keyboard some more so you can get a better look at it, I'll also tell you some interesting facts about the phone. For now, though, let's turn on word auto-completion. The Nokia C7 has 8GB of internal memory. It supports external memory using microSD, as I showed earlier in the hardware review. This gives you a total memory capacity of 40 gigabytes. 
The device itself weighs in at around 130 grams, and the dimensions are 117.3 by 56.8 by 10.5 millimeters. Nokia claimed that the standby time is up to 23 days. I did try to test this quite thoroughly, and I certainly achieved over two weeks, but it's hard to tell if I achieved the full 23 days as prescribed by Nokia. In terms of talk time, they say that it should offer 9.6 hours. Again, I tried to test this too, and I think I achieved something more like 7. Anyway, as you might be able to tell, my typing is pretty bad, and it's made worse by having to reach around the camera. So for now, let's quit the messaging application and head back to the home screen and see what we can access there in terms of changing our profiles, for example, to silent or to meeting. To do so, when on the home screen, you can literally tap the general button, and that will bring up the profiles options, and you can select meeting from there. To adjust the clock settings, you can literally tap the clock, and that will bring those up too. Let's add a new location. Let's add Antigua and Barbuda, which is somewhere I'd like to be right now. As you can see, Symbian version 3 makes it very easy to get to your main key settings from the home screen. Next up, let's take a look at the calendar. So to do so, we'll go back to the home screen and tap the calendar button in the top right hand corner. You'll notice that the calendar button also acts as the date. Let's try adding a new entry. This is pretty simple. Select options and then click new entry. From here, you can specify subject, start time, end time, or anything else. For now though, I'm not going to do anything. Let's just click done. This will create an unnamed calendar entry. To select different views, you can uh, press the bottom right hand icon and this will give you an option to view month, week or day. I've selected week. By now, hopefully you've started to gain a feel for how the new version of Symbian allows you to customise things like widgets on the home screen and also the standard things that are available through the previous versions of Symbian too. Of course, one of the things that phones need to still do very well is make calls and manage your contacts. So let's take a look at that. From the home screen, you can select the call key in the bottom right hand corner by touching the screen. From here, let's type in a number and save it. There are different ways to save a contact, for example by pressing the options button and save to contact. However, you can also press the bottom right hand corner, uh, which is your contacts book, and then click create new from there. When you do so, you can choose how a number should be saved. I'm going to select Home Mobile. You will then be prompted to select a first name, last name, and any other details that you deem necessary. I'm going to put in some characters now, just for a first name and last name. Once you are done, you can press the button, and it will tell you that a new contact has been updated successfully, and has been saved. Having performed this review, I found creating and managing my contacts pretty painless and hopefully anyone else who uses this latest version of Symbian will do too. To take a look at the contact that we've just created, let's visit our contacts from the main menu by pressing the Home key and selecting Contacts icon from there. Once the contact has been selected, you can view the information that we added earlier by selecting the tabs and, whilst holding the phone in landscape, you get pretty easy access to things like messaging and even the social networks. If you select the social network icon from a contact, you have to make sure you have a Nokia account registered to use the Obby services, otherwise you won't be able to take full advantage of the phone. To make a comparison to a competing phone OS, the equivalent would be having to have a Gmail account to really get the most out of Android. For now though, let's cancel this and take a look at one of the most important features when using uh, a medium to high-end phone such as the C7, the web browser.